Hey, poetry people. Um, I've been getting, oh, actually, wait, hold on. So I still want to play cool music as an intro, but I'm going to be putting this on YouTube. I think I'm going to move to YouTube soon. And so I can't play very much. Let me just play you a quick snippet of some entrance music. Um, All right, so anyways, um, hopefully that was enough to get you feeling pumped in the mood for some poetry. Um, this, this is going to be a little different. I, I wanted to talk about poetry as a craft, and my philosophy, a lot of people have been asking me, um, you know, a lot of questions about how to write poetry and where I get my ideas and these things, so I thought I'd start a series of lectures about poetry. Um, I do have a bachelor's degree in English literature. Um, yeah, so I feel pretty qualified. Um, I'm also soon going to be a published author. So um, what I wanted to talk uh, today about is why your poetry should rhyme. Um, it's a controversial thing. And if you look at a lot of modern poetry, a lot of poets have forgotten about rhyming um, because it's hard to do. It's a lot easier to just kind of blah, 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 be, boo, 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 who cares, um, and not try to rhyme. It's much harder and requires a lot more skill to rhyme um, because it's hard to think of words that rhyme, and which is something I'm pretty good at. So um, a lot of poetry these days is unfinished. It feels unfinished because the you read it and it doesn't rhyme. And it's hilarious because a lot of this poetry is, you know, um, becomes celebrated. Um, and I think that, you know, some of these poets uh, win prizes. Um, and I think if I had to guess why this is, I would say that um, we don't teach poetry in school anymore. And so people have, probably these people judging these sort of amateurish poets. Um, you know, I can think of uh, some, well, hold on, modern poet, I don't know. I actually can't think of any. Who is this? 30 poets you should be reading. Let's just, let me just take a look here. Okay, Amy King. Don't know who that is, but let me read her first, this little snippet. This is what it sounds like outside, fat geese and guinea hens holding hands. So there it is. It doesn't rhyme. <laughs> it's just, it's unfinished. Or, or maybe, um, maybe this person has um, some sort of uh, impairment where they can't think of rhymes. I mean, they could have been high when they wrote this. It's just, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's also sad. So what I wanted to talk about was why poetry should rhyme. So I made some notes and I just want to pull up. Um, so why poetry should rhyme? Here's some reasons. Number one, it sounds good. So what do I mean when I say it sounds good? Well, let's, let's think about a good rhyme. If I say, I love and love my good old friend. I hope our friendship never end, ends. Well, uh, that could use, I mean, I'll work on that, but uh, that sounds really good. Um, cool and pool. Ooh, you know that? That's like, ooh, that's good. That's like some really good rhyming. Um, uh, let me just, hold on, some more examples. Um, words, words that rhyme. Um, cat and bat. Sat, flat. Miss and kiss, that's good. Because you think about the conflict there, miss and kiss. You kiss, I would kiss a, mi a miss, a young miss. And that's some conflict. It builds tension, it sounds really good. Um, there's other reasons, what else, what, what are my other reasons, let me look. It helps you know what to say. Now this is a big deal. Um, often when you're writing poetry, the hardest thing is you don't know what to say next. If you use rhyming, it fills, it's like automatic. It fills itself in. So if I say, perchance I may go to the ball, 
okay, I'm thinking, oh God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Next, I'm going to this ball where, oh my God, like anything, you know, I could think of anything. I could be really creative. But with rhyming, I don't have to be. So I can say, um, this, the grandest ball of them all. So I didn't have to think of some new thing. It just filled itself in. I'm almost not even saying anything, which is why this technique is so powerful because I just can just blah, 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 blah. And um, it writes itself. And you can write really long poems that way, really long. Um, some of my poems are over a page. And that's just because I'm just rhyming. I'm just almost not, I'm just turning my brain off and just using rhymes. Cat, bat, sat, flat, um, that kind of thing. And, and I don't like to get complicated with the rhymes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. It's like, no, thank you. I, I, my rhyme schemes are typically A, 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 all the way down. Cat, flat, flat, bat, sat. Or I'll do A, 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 B, B, C, C, D, D, whatever, forever. And that's kind of advanced. Using letters is an advanced technique I'll talk about later. Um, if you look at some like real professionals and academics, you ask them about a poet, a poet, excuse me, a poem they like, and they'll say, "Oh yeah, A B C D A A B B B D D G G H." Oh, I love when he went G G L L K, and you know, and um, so that's just something you're gonna pick up. Like you're gonna want to be able to go to a conversation and say, "Oh, I would do A B C D." Or I would go e e e e e e e e. I had a poem that once went e e e e e e e e e e f. So think about that. That's something you can play with. Um, I think I had another. What was my other reason? Easier to remember. It's easier to remember things that rhyme. Um, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. I always remember that. And, you know, if you were to wake me up in the middle of the night and say, what's that thing that people say about doctors? I would say an apple of the day keeps the doctor away. It's it's so easy because it rhymes. And so some of these poems, you know, like I was looking at, let's look at another uh, famous, famous poets uh, right now. Um, let me see if I can remember even just a bit of this. Let's take another, who is this? Uh, Carmen... Jimenez Smith. Okay, let me take two lines and see if I can remember them. I'd once have left brown behind. Okay, can I remember that? No. <laughs> it's, it's like whoop, whoop, in one out ear, in one ear out the other. Um, because it does not rhyme. And so I'm the whole time I'm reading it, I'm just it's just white noise to me. I'm just kind of tuning it out. And I'm getting annoyed as I'm hearing these words because they're not fitting any structure that makes sense to me. So it's very annoying when poetry doesn't rhyme. And I think you'll feel that when you're reading some of these modern poets who aren't as good as the classics. And when I say classics, I'm talking about um, Shel Silverstein or um, maybe what's Shakespeare, somebody like that, or... Uh, well, it doesn't matter, but that's that's what I'm talking about. So now I wanted to, um, as an exercise, I wanted to take a well-known, a, fa a very famous poem by T.S. Eliot called The Wasteland, which is kind of known as a poem that was never really finished. It doesn't rhyme, <laughs> which uh, is hard to look past. It's uh, definitely... It's a lesser poem for that reason, but there's still some interesting ideas. I feel like if it had been edited by someone competent, like Theodore Geisel, someone like that, it could have been a pretty good poem. Still not great, still still a little too weird or a little, um, you know, woo, but I think if it just, if it had some editing. So I wanted to go through and show you how I would edit this poem. So first, so The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. For Ezra Pound, Ill Miglier, Fat, like this, no one cares. This is, this is, just don't put stuff like that, doesn't matter. I, the burial of the dead. Is this really necessary? I don't think so. So I'd get rid of that too. You don't need, 
little titles and little, doesn't matter. Um, so let's read it. April is the cruelest month breeding, lilacs out of the dead land mixing. Okay, so already we're losing the rhyme, we're losing the feel, and I'm starting to doze off a little bit. How would I fix this? So let's let's play with it. April is the cruel, cruelest month breeding. What rhymes with breeding? Bleeding. That is kind of cool. So lilacs out of the dead land bleeding. So if we said that here, bleeding, that's cool. Dead land bleeding. Now that's... I'm per my ears are perking up. Whoa, this guy's got something to say. It rhymes. <laughs> uh, so I would say that. April is the cruelest month breeding, lilacs out of the dead land bleeding. Memory and desire stirring, dull roots with spring rain. Oh, fell flat there. So stirring, what rhymes with stirring? What about whirring? Dull roots with, what whirs? Uh, mm, bugs, bugs were, uh, with, so I would say bugs were, sorry, this is hard to do. I'm using a mouse. I don't know. Can barely read that. With bugs whirring, winter kept us warm, covering, earth in forgetful snow hovering. Easy. Get rid of that. Hovering. You, you, you know. A little life with dried tubers. I don't know what a tuber is. Maybe he meant tumor or something like that. So question mark, further research on that probably. Again, he's probably writing this very fast. A first draft usually looks like this. There's a lot of mistakes. So I'd question mark, hey, maybe, you know, Google, he didn't have Google. We're lucky now. We can avoid these sorts of typos now. A word just comes up. It's great. Underline, hey, don't think this is a word, chief. And he didn't have that. So I can, we can forgive some of that. So a little life with dried tubers, summer surprised us. Coming over the Starnbergersee. Rookie mistake. What happened here? He painted himself in, into a corner. Stanberger Z. Uh, no, nothing. You're not gonna. You could spend all day. You're not gonna find a word that rhymes with Stanberger Z. It's not gonna happen. You painted yourself in a corner. You need to start over. Um, different word. Uh, that's hard to even get through. And I, so I don't want to do the whole thing, but just looking colonnade Hof Hof Garden. Act Deutsch. So any of these, oh, Bingar kind, yeah, none of that. These are German. That's garbage. Just stick with one language. That's another huge tip. A lot of amateur writers, I'm reading their poetry. There's two, three, four languages. Just switch. It's like, that's going to do nothing but confuse the reader. And frankly, it's just, not as, it's not, it's, well, frankly, it's stupid. I, I would not do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's just a little tip for you. Um, the rest of this poem, here's another thing I would say. Screw, you know, short poems. Just focus on this right here. I would get rid of the rest of this. I don't remember how much of this poem there is. I don't think there's much more than this. Unnecessary. Cut it out. It's tight. You just want to go on and on. No, no, thank you. Um, I do like this. Drank coffee. That's cool. Relatable. So I'll put, I would put, if I was a teacher, smile, big smile for that. Big smile. Anyways, that's um, what I would say about that poem. So I hope you found that helpful. That's kind of my philosophy around um, rhyming. And um, a lot of people have been seeing comments saying this is distracting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to stop doing that, but it's hard. So um, what was I talking about? about? Yeah, so rhyming. I hope that helps. Um, 
this is just my first in a series of lectures. Um, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Let me just play a little, a little bit more hype music. Again, I have to keep it short because of YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.